Hello dears, let us study today uh, the problem on critical path method. So we are going to deal with the problem on critical path method. You know that this critical path method is one technique for project scheduling or network scheduling. Uh, now there are two basic planning and uh, control techniques that utilize a network to complete a predetermined project or schedule. Uh, these two, uh, prog uh, these two uh, techniques are one is CPM abbreviated as CPM called critical path method and the other is PERT project evaluation and review technique. So it in this problem we shall deal with critical path method. Now let me read this question and I shall explain all the requirements for this critical path method through this particular problem. A project consists of a series of tasks labeled A, B through I, I with the following uh, relationships W less than X comma Y means X and Y cannot start until W is completed x comma y less than w means w cannot start until both x and y are completed so we can uh, read w precedes x and x comma y and x comma y precedes w with this notation construct the network diagram having the following constraints a precedes d comma e b d precedes f c precedes g b g precedes h f g precedes i Find also the minimum time of completion of the project when the time in days of completion of each task is as follows. The task or activities are given A, A to uh, I. Time is also given. Okay. Time in days is given. Now let us uh, start doing this particular problem. First of all, we shall try to draw the corresponding network diagram with respect to the question given, uh, given here. Now in order to draw the network diagram, let us first try to understand which all are the initial activities and which all are the terminal activities. Now see here we are going to draw the diagram as activity on arrow type diagram. Uh, so first let us try to understand which all are the initial activities and which are the final activities. So the activities are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H I. Now as you can see from here A precedes D and E. B D. So uh, let us uh, just uh, cut off the succeeding events. D and E are two succeeding events. F is a succeeding event. You can see that F is a succeeding event. Then G is a succeeding event. So all these succeeding events are identified from here. D, E and E are succeeding events. F is a succeeding event. G is a succeeding event. H is a succeeding event. And I is a succeeding event. So all these, let me cut off all these things. So from this, by cutting off all the succeeding events, you we get to know that A, B, C, all these three are the events without any predecessors. Okay. Now, in the exactly in the same way, let us try to understand the final events A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So, let us try to understand which all are the uh, final or last events in the list. So, we can see that A has a succeeding event. A is a preceding event. So, let me cut off that preceding events right now. A is a preceding event. Then uh, B and D are preceding events. B and D are preceding events. Then C is a preceding event. C is a preceding event. Then B and G are preceding events. B and G are preceding events. Then F, G are preceding events. F and G, F and G are preceding events. So uh, when we cut off all the preceding events, uh, we got E, H, I as the last remaining events. So a, B, C are the events that uh, with which we start the whole network and E, H, I are uh, those events which have no uh, successes. Okay, 
So uh, all these things are uh, the informations that we gather from the question given. Now let us try to uh, sketch that network diagram. So initially I am not going to ma number the nodes. First, so first let us have a rough sketch of what needs to be done and after that we will finalize our sketch. So let me have the rough sketch. So we need to start from a node node is actually an event and let me draw uh, we know that a b c are the e activities from which we start the whole operation whole project so let me mark a b let this be a this be b and this be c okay so the numbering of the events will be done later now B and D precedes uh, F, A precedes D and E, A precedes D and E. So let me write, draw a D, uh, E here and let me draw an, a D here. Then we know that B and D precedes F, B and D together precedes F. So instead of drawing D here, this is my D, so instead of drawing D here, it will be better if I can draw D like this. Anyhow, A has to precede D. So, there is no harm in drawing D like this. So, this also reads as D is preceded by A. D is preceded by A means the activity A has to be complete before D begins. So, that is what is meant by A precedes D. Okay. So, there is no harm in redrawing D like this. Now, you can draw B uh, and D uh, precedes F. So, this is also fine. Now, C precedes G. C precedes G. So, let me draw G here. C precedes G. Then, B, G precedes F. B, G precedes F. B is here. B is here and G is here. So, B and G together precedes H. B and D together precedes H. So, this is our, uh, let me draw this as our H. Now, I need B also to precede H. So, we are left with no other option but to I include a dummy activity here. So, that is the role of dummy activity. Dummy activity means it is an activity that us that uh, that actually do not consume any time or resources and it is used uh, it is used as a connection between uh, two activities so dummy activity is usually depicted uh, by uh, uh, dotted lines uh, and arrows so this activity uh, do not uh, consume any time or resources it is just used as a connector it is just used as a connector. So, I am including a dummy activity here so that it reads B and G together precedes H. Okay. Then, uh, B and G precedes H. Now, F and G precedes I. That is the last one. F and G precedes I. This is our F. This is our F. And G. This is our G. Together precedes I. F and G together precedes I. So, if I draw this only, then it means that this I is preceded by only F. I is preceded by only F. But we need this G also to precede I. So, we will draw uh, a dummy here. And so, this reads uh, G uh, and, I, G and uh, F together precedes I. So, we completed all the activities as given in the question. But now you can see that there is a dangling here. So, you can see that there is a dangling here. Dangling means the activity H, the activity I and the activity E. So, they, uh, they end at uh, some point and after that there is no other event. So, no activity uh, should be ended be, be, uh, before uh, without joining it to the final event. So no activity should end like this. So if such a uh, such a thing happens, we call that as dangling. Okay. So uh, dumb, if this dangling happens, one way out is 
you can introduce dummy activities in order to avoid dangling so here we don't need any dummy activities instead instead of drawing e like this you can just connect it to the last node and you can sketch your e like this so e, uh, without drawing h like this you can just take it from here and you can connect it to the end node so in this way also dangling can be avoided so if such a thing cannot happen then it uh, then uh, the only way out is to introduce dummy activities so to avoid dangling so anyhow whatever be the means through which we uh, we do this this dangling should be avoided okay so that is called a dangling dangling means uh, there are activities which are not connected to the final event and so that is left without connecting uh, them to final event as we had seen in the previous stage so hope you understand the situation of dangling so this dangling should be avoided i shall show it again so here we say that the activity h that uh, that has got this uh, part particular stage of dangling so in order to avoid dangling we are uh, redrawing h like this okay so that is the case of dangling now let me uh, redraw the whole thing uh, in a nice way because i need more space uh, to mark the earliest times and latest times so let me mark the event in a neat way so here we have a here we have b so let me mark a b here and here we have c then from c we can go to a g from c we can go to g g then uh, from p from b this is f then from then this is from f to i then there is an event h there is an activity h here then from this node we have a dummy activity here and there is it another dummy here d2 and here i have my e okay now that our uh, network diagram is complete so let me just wrap this network diagram because that is already redrawn here okay. so that i can have more space here now by the side of this activity so far we have marked only the activity i am going to uh, number the uh, events as well now before going to the numbering of the nodes let me write here the duration of each activity the duration of a is 23 the duration of b is 8 the duration of c is 20 the duration of g is uh, 19 the duration of f is uh, 18 the duration of e is 24 the duration of uh, i is uh, 10 the duration of h is 4 uh, the duration of d1 will be 0 the duration of d2 also will be 0 the dummy activity will have duration equal to 0 now let us number the nodes now for numbering of the nodes we follow a particular rule called a Fulkerson's rule. So that's the rule Fulkerson's rule. So this Fulkerson's rule is adopted in order to number the nodes of a network diagram. Now let us see what are those rules. The even numbers should be uh, unique. Num number should be unique means no two events should have the same number we uh, so these nodes the nodes are called events so through the nodes we represent events so in order to uh, number the events we use this particular rule called the Fulkerson's rule so the even numbers should be unique the even number should be carried out in a uh, sequentially 
uh, in or uh, uh, from left to right then the initial event which has all outgoing arrows with no um, incoming arrow should be numbered 0 or 1 the initial event from which all arrows are outgoing and no arrow is incoming should be numbered with 0 or 1 that's our choice you can number either by 0 or th by 1 the head of an arrow should always bear a number greater than the tail of a number so the head of a number should always bear a number greater than the tail of a number if i uh, denote it by 1 here i can put 2 then i can put here 3 i can put here 4 so you can see that the head of uh, and again one more thing for an arrow like this for an arrow like this this the initial point is called uh, the tail of the arrow and the terminal point is called uh, head of the arrow okay so the head of the arrow should bear in uh, a number greater than the tail of the arrow okay so uh, these are the rules that are to be followed these rules are called the Fulkerson's rule in uh, numbering the nodes or uh, events of a network diagram. So this is 4. Let me number this by 5, this by 6 and this by 7. So we can see that this rule is followed throughout the network diagram. Now we, before we proceed to the uh, uh, next stage, let me write uh, the earliest times and latest times in boxes above each uh, each node so here above all node let me so let us uh, put boxes above each node so in this boxes we will denote the earliest times and the latest time okay so let us start with the earliest time. So we shall uh, we shall start with the earliest times first, and then we come back and finish with the latest time. So each box is divided into two cells. So the first cell. So we start from the time t, or time zero. Now uh, for this uh, this head node two, for the head node two, we take the zero plus twenty three. That is equal to 23 now uh, sorry I forgot to draw I forgot to draw a D here so there is a D here there is a D here and that D has time D has time 60 I forgot that okay so now in order to uh, have the earliest time of 3 we have to consider these two arrows because in order to reach 3 there are two paths one is through 1 from 1 to then 2 3 other from 1 to 3 directly so we shall uh, in order to have the earliest time of this 3 we have to consider both these times and we have to consider the maximum of 0 plus 20 uh, and uh, maximum of 0 plus 8 or 23 plus 60 see we are already in 2 and at 2 the earliest time is 23 so that 23 plus 16 is one option or if we start from 1 and reach 3 through this direct edge 0 plus 8 is a second option so 23 plus 16 39 is a maximum possible time so in this forward calculations we are always calculate, uh, considering the maximum time so this earliest time is 39 now when it comes to 4 there is only one arrow ending at 4 and therefore 0 plus 20 equal to 20 that's the earliest time at 4 now coming to 5, coming to 5, so this is for 5, so for the node 5, for the node 5, there are two arrows ending at 5. One is from 4 and the other is from 3. So we have to consider the maximum of 20 plus 19, that is if we consider the moment from 4, you have to consider 20 plus 19. If you are considering the movement from 3, 39 
plus 0. 0 because we have a dummy activity in between. For the dummy activity, the uh, time duration is 0. So, in either case, it is 20 plus 9. If it is 20 plus 19 or 39 plus uh, 0, it is uh, 39 itself. So, here the earliest start, earliest time is 39. Now, when it comes to 6, there is only path, one path to 6 and therefore 39 plus 18. So, that is 57. Then, to 7. So, or everything I accept that 7 is finished. Now, for that 7, so let me consider what happens for 7. For 7, we have maximum of, there are 3 paths to this 7. Okay, so we have to consider all the three roots. So, maximum of 39 plus 4, if we consider the path from 5, maximum of 39 plus 4, or it is uh, 4, 6, it is, uh, again, 4, 6 also, there were two paths. One is through, uh, one is through, th from 3, and the other is from 5. So, from 5, the length is 39 plus 0. So, it is less than uh, this 57. So, anyhow, this 57 itself should be considered. Now, for 7, it is 39 plus 4 is one option. Then, 57 plus 10. For i, the duration is 10. Plus uh, 10 is another option. Then, 23. That is, there is a path from 2. So, 23 plus 24 is another option. So, the maximum value is 57 plus 10 and so that we, uh, we consider the earliest time as that 67. So, co we completed all the earliest types. Hope you understand this. Now, see, uh, since we are uh, scheduling a project, we are, setting the, we are setting the maximum time, maximum possible time. That is why we are uh, in forward pass calculations, we always consider the maximum possible time. That is, we set a maximum limit for any project to happen. We don't set the minimum time. So, we always set the maximum time for a project to happen. So, that project should be completed within that maximum time allotted. So, that's the logic behind setting this maximum value of maximum value for every earliest start time. Now, let us consider the backward, uh, the uh, latest finish time. So, let us consider this latest times. So, in order to consider the latest times, we start from 67. So, for the last note, we start from 67 itself. Now, let us come back to 5. Now, in order to consider 5, you have to look at all the arrows that start from 5. So, uh, the arrows that start from 5 are 2 in number. So, this is one arrow that start from 5 and this is another arrow that start from 5 or there are two activities that start from 5. So, uh, let us consider this 5 later since we have to consider these two arrows and one such arrow starts, uh, one such arrow uh, has its end at 6. So, this 6 is to be considered before moving to 5. So, let us consider 6. For this 6, there is only one succeeding activity from 6. So, that itself is to be considered. So, 67 minus 10, 57 is, uh, uh, is the way uh, how, uh, through how we uh, calculate this latest time. So, this is how we calculate the latest time for this node 6, 67 minus 10. Now, let us consider node 5. So, for uh, 5, for 5, we consider the latest times. So, that is minimum. When we have the backward calculation method, we set the minimum. So, minimum among 67 minus 4, minimum among this value 67 minus 4. Or, now there is another path, there is another terminal, uh, there is another terminal node at 6. So, an activity from 5 ends at 6. So, we can consider that 6 as well. So, 57 minus 0. So, 57 minus 0 being the smallest value, we can write that here. Okay. Now, let us consider our 4. So, from 4, only one uh, activity emerges and therefore, we can consider 57 minus 19. 57 minus 19 is 38. Then, for 3, there are through of, so let us consider what happens for 3. 
for 3 2 activities emerge from 3 ok therefore we need to consider minimum among 57 minus minimum among 57 minus 18 so that is one option then uh, the another activity emerging from 3 is the dummy activity but we, we have to consider that as well so 57 minus 0 so this 57 minus 18 is the minimum value and that is 39 so that 39 is written here so for the latest time of this 3 we need to write 39 ok because that is the minimum between these two values now for 2 so let us consider what happens for 2 for 2 also more than one arrow emerged from 2 we don't consider the arrow that is ending at 2 but we consider the arrows that is emerging from 2 so for 2 minimum among 67 minus 24 one arrow that is emerging from 2 ends at 7 so we have to consider the latest time at 7 that is 67 minus 24 is one option then another arrow emerging from 2 goes to 3 so at 3 the latest time is 39 minus 60 so these are the two options so 39 minus 16 23 this is the minimum value and so here we have 23 okay so we finished everything up to uh, the vertex 2 now we consider what happens for a vertex 1 for vertex 1 since 3 arrows emerge from from node 1 we have to consider all the three possibilities so one possibility is 23 minus 23 so one arrow emerging from uh, 1 ends at 2 therefore we consider this 23 minus the uh, time duration of the activity a so 23 minus 23 it is 0 then another one is 39 minus 8 another one is 38 minus 20 so or we, among all these values 0 is a minimum value and so we assume here 0 so hence we calculated all the earliest times and latest times for each node from 1 through 7. Now let us find the critical path. Now let us find the critical path. So the critical path will have the earliest times and latest times as equal. So for all the critical paths the earliest time should be equal to the latest times. So also one more thing that you have to notice in critical path is for the critical path uh, for the for the activity in critical path the difference in the latest times uh, should be equal to the difference in the earliest times and that should be equal to the duration. So let us see which is the critical path. See for the active, for the node 1 uh, the earliest times and latest times are 0 and 0. For the node 3 it is 39 and 39. For the node 2 it is 23 and 23. So we are confused regarding which should what should be our critical path. Okay. So, in order to see that we should have the earliest, the difference of the earliest times that is 23 minus 0 that is equal to the time duration. Similarly, the dis difference between the latest times that is 23 minus 0 that is also equal to duration. So, this is for the activity 1, two, for the activity 1, 2 and for the see what happens for the activity 1, 3, for the activity 1, 3 difference between the earliest times is 39 minus 0 it is not equal to the time duration similarly the difference between the latest times and uh, uh, latest times is also not equal to so uh, only one thing that you have to check the other will also be exactly in the same line so anyhow the difference between the earliest times or difference between the latest times should be equal to the time duration of that particular activity so that is satisfied 
for the activity that is satisfied for this activity from 1 to 2. So this is one, this is one, this is one of our critical activity. So this is one critical activity. Then the other critical activity is 39 minus 23. This is equal to 16. So this is the second critical activity. So this is the second critical activity. Third critical activity for the node 3, 39, 39. For the node 6, 57, 57. So there is no confusion in between. So this is the next critical activity. So this is the next critical activity. Then for the node 6, it is 57, 57. For the node 7, it is 67, 67. So this is the next critical activity. Okay. So we, let us write our critical path. So our critical path. Therefore, our critical path is our critical path is A, then uh, D, then uh, F, then I. Or that can also be taken as 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, then 3 to 6, then 6 to 7. And the length of this critical path is the length of the critical path uh, for A, the length length of this critical path is for A, it is uh, 23 plus uh, for D, it is 16, for uh, F, it is 18, for D, uh, for uh, I, it is 10 and together it is 67 and that is the value here. So, by calculating this last earlier start time, we are actually having the project length. So, this is the project length. So, that project length can be, uh, uh, can be had after calculating all the earliest start or all the earliest times itself. So, this is the project length. You don't have to add it up again. That's already done. So that is how we got this critical path. So this last value itself will give you the project length. So I have written, uh, I added up here just to show you that this is exactly the same value. So that is all with respect to this network diagram. Now the problem will be complete only after doing uh, a table calculation. So let us do the table calculations as well. Now let us find the tabular computations associated with this question. Now you can see that here we have uh, several columns in this table. The first column is that of activity. Now you can see that the activities are 1, 2 denoted by activity uh, A, uh, then 1, 3, 1, 4, 2, 3, uh, 2, 7, 3, 5, 3, 6, etc. And the activity durations are also written here. You can see it directly from the uh, given network, from the obtained network or you can write it directly from the question itself. Now let us fill the other details. So we are going to start with this tab tabular computations from the column of EST. Now EST is the earliest start time. So this can directly uh, be written from the network that we have uh, written right here. We have drawn right here. So let me write the EST values are 0. The first value is 0. The For the activity 1, 2, consider the node 1. There the EST is 0. Then for 1, 3 it is 0, for 1, 4 it is 0, the uh, initial activity is 1, so its earliest start time is taken. Then for the activity starting at 2, for the activity starting at 2, we consider the node 2 and uh, we find its earliest start time, it is 23. Then for activity 3, 5 and 3, 6, we consider the node 3. So, for the node 3, the earliest start time is this 39. So, we write 39 here. So, 39, 39. Now, for the node 4, 5, uh, we need to consider the node 4. Its earliest start time is 20. For 5, 6 and 5, 7, uh, we have to consider the node 5 and its earliest start time is 39. And for the node 6, 7, uh, 6, 7, we consider 6, the node 6, and we consider its earliest start time. So it is 57. So we completed EST. Now we are going to find 
LFT this can also be written directly from the tape network diagram itself so LS LFT is written as the second column now LFT see the for the activity 1 2 the activity ends at node 2 so we consider the node 2 and we uh, write what is written in the second uh, cell of the um, second cell associated with the node and therefore it is 23 now for 1 3 we have to consider the node 3 and we have to consider the second cell that is LFT that is 39 then corresponding to uh, 1 4 we have to con consider the vertex 4 and the second cell of vertex uh, node 4 is considered it is 38 then for 2 3 it is 39 then for 2 7 it is 67 for a uh, uh, 3 5 it is 57 for uh, 3 6 it is for 3 6 it is 57 for 4 5 4 5 it is uh, 57 we consider the node 5 then for 5 6 it is 57 we consider the uh, LFT of the node 6 then for 5 7 it is 67 for uh, 6 7 also it is 67 so we completed EST and LFT now the remaining now let us fill EFT you can see that this EST plus the duration so let me put the duration as capital D so EST plus duration that will be EFT earliest finish time so the 0 plus 23 uh, then 0 plus 8 0 plus 20 0 uh, 23 plus 16 39 then 23 plus 24 47 then 0 plus uh, 39 it is 39 18 plus 39 it is 57 then 39 20 plus 19 0 plus 39 then 4 plus 39 then 10 plus 57 it is 67 so that is EFT now we are going to find LST so LFT minus duration will give you LST LST latest finish time minus duration will give you latest start time so 23 minus 23 it is 0 then uh, 39 minus 8 it is uh, 31 39 minus 8 it is 31 then 38 minus 20 it is uh, uh, 18 then 39 minus 16 it is 23 then 67 minus 23 it is 47 uh, sorry 44 then 57 minus sorry it is 43 67 minus 24 it is 43 then 57 minus 0 it is uh, 57 then 57 minus 18 it is 39 then 57 minus 19 it is 38 then 57 minus 0 it is uh, 57 then 67 minus 4 it is 63 then 67 minus 10 it is minus 10 it is 57 okay so we completed our LST okay now let us uh, fill our total float free float and independent float we know that we are so we are going to calculate the floats now uh, by float we mean the amount of time by which it is possible to delay the completion time without affecting the total project completion time. So, the amount of time uh, uh, by which it is possible to delay the whole project. So, that is what is called a float. So, we are going to calculate total float, free float and independent float. Total for float of an activity represents the amount of time by which an activity can be delayed without delay in the project completion date so 
it is the amount of time by which an activity can be delayed without affecting the project completion date. So here we are going to find total float first. Now one thing we can do uh, even before computing the total float is for the critical activities. Critical activities means the activities that are in the critical path. They are called the critical activities or in other words the critical activities make up this critical path. Okay. So the critical activities. So the critical activities uh, for the critical activities the float values all the float values will be equal to zero so we can uh, we can write the uh, float values uh, initially uh, corresponding to the critical values so let me write the float values here corresponding to the critical activities so total flow free float and independent float all those will be equal to zero for the critical activities now before that let me uh, let me tell you how to calculate this critic uh, the total float free float etc then you can convince for yourself how the float values are equal to zero for critical activities so let us uh, uh, see what the total float is now uh, in order to calculate the total float we use the expression lft minus eft so this is one way to calculate the total flow or in other words lst or LST minus EST. So in these two ways the total float can be calculated. Either LFT minus EFT. LFT minus EFT means uh, so this is the uh, column LFT minus EFT. So this is one way of computing. So LFT minus EFT or you can use LFT and EST. You can take the difference of LST and EST. In either way, you can get the total float. So let us see how the total float can be obtained. See, 23 minus 23, it is zero. For the critical activity, 23 minus 23, zero. Or zero minus zero also give you the same value. Now 39 minus eight, 39 minus eight, or 31 minus zero. So it is 31. Now 38 minus 20, it is 18 or 18 minus 0 is also 18. Now 39 minus 39 or 23 minus 23. So it is equal to 0. So we can see that for the critical activity 2, 3, the float is equal to 0. Now you can directly substitute uh, value 0 for all the uh, for total float for all the critical activities. Now for 2, 7, it is 67 minus 47 it is 20. Now for a, a 3, 5 it is 57 minus 39 it is 18. Then for 4, 5 it is 57 minus 39 or it is 38 minus 20. In either way it is 18. Then 57 minus 39. 57 minus 39 or uh, the other pair is also 57 minus 39 it is 18. Now for 5, 7, it is uh, 50, 67 minus 43, it is 24. So uh, when you consider 63 and 39, 63 minus 39, it is also equal to 24. Then 67 minus 67, it is 0. Or 57 minus 57, that is also equal to 0. So we computed free float. Now let us see how the, how uh, free float is calculated. So here, in uh, through this press, through this uh, column, we have all the uh, total float values. Now let us compute the free float. So the next column is regarding free float. Now to compute free float, now actually this free float is that portion of the total float within which the activity can be manipulated without affecting the float of the subsequent activities. So let me repeat. Free float is that portion of the total float within which the activity can be delayed without affecting the float of the subsequent activity. So here we are going to find the tot free float and let us see how that free float can be easily calculated. See consider, uh, consider what is written over each node. I shall explain how to get that uh, free float with reference to this uh, nodes written on uh, top of uh, each uh, activity. So let me, so let us see how that free float can be computed. 
so just consider these two as uh, two uh, values written at earliest and latest times of uh, corresponding to any two activities any two, uh, corresponding to any two nodes of the same activity now in order to calculate the free float we are going to consider this cell the first cell we are going to consider the first cells of above each node so this first cell the first cell difference minus duration so that will help to compute that will help you to compute now in order to calculate the free float we are using uh, the uh, values written on top of each node so here let me consider an activity ij let me consider an activity ij so on the above the node i we have uh, we have two cells like this similarly above the node j also we have two cells like this and there is an activity duration for this activity ij now in order to calculate uh, free float so let me call this as uh, let me call this as 1 this is 2 so in order to calculate the free float what we do is we take 2 minus duration minus 1 so this is how we calculate some problem here at this particular point so in order to calculate the free float what we do is we calculate we take this 2 so this is 2 we take this 2 minus we uh, duration is subtracted minus this first cell so first cell so this is how we calculate float in a very easy way so let us see how that float can be computed here okay now in order to calculate the free float again uh, the free float for uh, uh, all the critical activities are the uh, are equal to zero so we can directly check that with the help of this uh, formula now for activity 1 2 uh, for activity 1 2 so let me take the activity 1 2 this is the activity 1 2 so 23 minus 23 minus 23 minus 0 so it is equal to 0 so that is how we get free float for the activity 1 2 now for activity 1 3 for activity 1 3 so this is the activity 1 3 now for the activity 1 3 for we take 39 minus 8 minus 0 that is the first cell of uh, the node uh, 39 that is earliest time of node, third, uh, node 3 minus duration minus earliest time of uh, node 1 so it is 31 now for activity 1 4 for 1 4 for activity 1 4 uh, 30 uh, sorry 20 20 minus 20 minus 0 so it is equal to 0 now for activity 2 3 for activity uh, 2 3 for activity 2 3 activity 2 3 is included as a critical activity so 39 minus 16 minus 23 so it is equal to 0 for activity 27 for 27 for activity 27 27 is this long line this line is 27 connecting 2 and 7 for activity 27 we have 67 for activity 27 we have 67 minus 24 minus 23 so 67 minus 47 it is equal to 20 now for activity 3 5 it is for activity 3 5 for activity 3 5 it is 39 minus 0 minus 39 it is equal to 0 for activity 3 5 it is 39 here it is 0 minus 39 so it is equal to 0 now for activity 3 6 it is for activity 3 6 for activity 3 6 this is 6 and this is 3 57 minus 80 minus 39 57 minus 80 minus 39 so it is also equal to 0 now for activity 4 5 it is 
activity 4 5 this is the activity 4 5 and here it is 39 minus 19 minus 20 uh, so it is also equal to 0 now for activity 5 6 so this is the activity e this is the dummy activity 5 6 and for activity 5 6 it is 57 minus 0 minus 39 it is 18 then for activity 5 7 so this is the activity 5 7 for this activity 67 minus 4 minus 39 so it is 24 then for activity uh, for the last activity it's a critical activity so it's a uh, free float is also equal to zero so we obtained a free flow now let us calculate the independent flow so that's the last calculation independent flow now independent flow can be obtained with respect to the uh, free flow this independent flow independent flow independent flow is equal to free float minus tail even slack free float minus tail event slack now what is this tail event slack tail event slack means uh, the slack of the of the starting event tail event is a starting event so for an activity we calculate the independent float independent float is equal to free float minus tail event slack so let us see what is a free float with respect to each uh, node now consider the node, uh, consider the activity 1, 2. For the activity 1, 2, it's a critical activity. Now for this critical activity, free float is 0, free float is 0 minus tail event is 1. For the activity 1, 2, tail event is 1. Now for the 1, for 1, for the node 1, the difference between uh, the earliest start time and latest finish time that is equal to 0 so 0 minus 0 it is equal to 0 now for the activity 1 3 for the activity 1 3 free float is 31 minus the tail event slack is uh, uh, tail event slack is uh, 0 so it is equal to 31 itself now for the activity 1 4 it is 0 minus tail event slack the slack of the node 1 1 the slack of the node 1 is 0 so it is 0 minus 0 equal to 0 then for the activity 2 3 it is again 0 minus 0 for the activity 2 7 let us see so it is 20 for the activity 2 7 it is 20 minus the uh, tail is 2 tail of this activity is 2 and for the tail 2 we know that uh, the slack is computed as a difference in earliest time and latest time. So, 23 minus 23, it is 0. So, 20 minus 0, it is 20 itself. So, that is the independent float of uh, activity 2, 7. Now, for activity 3, 5, it is 3, 5. For the activity 3, 5, it is uh, 0 minus 0. For the activity 3, 6, that is also 0 minus 0. For the activity 4, 5, it is 0 minus for the activity 4, 5. Activity, uh, the tail is uh, 4. The tail node is 4. And the difference here is 38 minus 20. That is 18. So, 0 minus 18. This is equal to minus 18. It's now, for the activity 5, 6. For the activity 5, 6. It is 18 minus 18 minus 57 minus 13 uh, uh, for the activity 5 6 uh, 5 is the tail tail uh, even and therefore the uh, slack of the tail event is 57 minus the slack is 57 minus 39 it is 18 so here we will have 18 minus 18 is equal to 0 now for the activity 5 7 it is 24 minus for uh, 5, uh, we already computed it as 18. So, 24 minus for the activity 5, uh, 24 minus 18, it is 6. Then uh, for the activity 6, 7, this is equal to 0. And hence, we computed all the float values corresponding to this network diagram. Thank you.